Hello everyone, on today's video we'll learn about shift and use it to find and move our mouse to a rotated and scale object inside a bigger image. Shift stands for Scale Invariant Feature Transform. It is an algorithm in the OpenCV library which is more powerful than Match Template because as the name states, it can find the query image even if it is scaled or rotated. In this sample image, for example, you can see that the piranha plant is a bit bigger and also rotated than from the one in this bigger image. Match template will not be able to find it unless you use workarounds, but Sif does better at this. Let's dive into the code. Like any professional programmer, I copy-pasted a starter code from the official documentation. I will link it on the description. This is our work environment. I am using Visual Studio Code. Our work folder has a query image and a train image. I rotated and scaled the query image to show the power of Sift. I also have this .py file where I pasted the starter code. We will go through it. Because of the complexity of Sift, the best approach is analyzing the starter code, see how it works, and use what we need. Unless you are a high intermediate or better programmer, this is the best option. First, we have our imports, which are NumPy, OpenCV, and Matplotlib. Then, we have a global variable, which is mean match count, and it is set equal to 10. As you know, having the variable in caps is the conventional way to point it out as a global in Python. We will look into this variable a bit more later on. Next, we are getting our query and train images. The zero here indicates we want the image in black and white. Here, we access a SIFT instance. Then, we get the key points and descriptors of each image by running detect and compute on each one. Key points are points of interest that the algorithm can use to identify the object, like corners or curves. Descriptors are descriptions of the surroundings of the key points. The process is similar as to when we solve a puzzle and we start by the corners, make our way to the edges, and use them as a foundation to solve the rest. We can see the key points by creating a custom variable. I will comment everything else out. Let's do kps underscore ing and set it equal to cv dot drop key points. The image parameter refers to the source image, which will be ing1. The key points for set image are in the kp1 variable. and the out image is what will be displayed and we are going to base it on the source image. Let's use inshow to display the image. Remember that the window name can be whatever you want. Also let's use wait key to keep the image running and this is what it looks like. Now let's change the ones to twos to check out the next image. Great, everything is looking good. All of this might make you think that it is a slow process, but the base language for OpenCV is C++, so it's considerably fast. Back in our code, let's delete everything we don't need. The next part of the process is the matching algorithm. These are the recommended values offered by the docs. If you are trying to do something complex and they are not working, you must look into the docs for further algorithm options and values. If you are not doing anything too crazy, they will work fine. To run the algorithm, we create a matches variable and set it equal to flan which contains the algorithm itself and run the knn match method. 
As you can see, it takes in the descriptors of both images. This will return a tuple with all the possible matches. The next step is filtering out the matches we got returned. So an empty list is created and we append to it all the matches with an accuracy of 70% or above. To increase or decrease this filter, we need to use a float from 0 to 1. So I want an accuracy of 75%, therefore I will change this to 0 0.75. After we have a list of good matches, we count them. If there are at least 10 good matches, we can assume we found the image and proceed to draw on the images. The src underscore points variable will store the x and y coordinates for all the matching key points. On the other hand, the dst underscore points variable will do the same for the train image. We can print out the dst underscore points variable and see those coordinates. If we search for them in our almighty paint, you can see for yourself. So somewhere around here is one of many matching key points. This part of the code basically draws a rectangle over the query inside the train image after determining its position while considering rotation and scaling. The result is stored in this img2 variable. Let's quickly visualize it using inshow and wait key. So there it is. Now let's get rid of everything we don't need. Something important we must know is that this DST variable holds the four coordinates where the rectangle is drawn. If we print it out, we can see that it is a nested list. This information is very valuable for the bots that we'll be creating on our next video. Let's get rid of everything that we don't need again. If less than 10 matches are found, as we determined before, this message will be printed. Now we are just drawing lines over the matches. You can play with these options a little bit if you want, but I think they're not so important for our main goal. If we run the entire starter code, we will be shown our final result. As a little extra project, let's move our mouse to the center of the image we are trying to find. So this is what we are going to do. BAM, but using Python. First, let's import Py out of GUI. If you don't have it, you need to pip install it. Now, I will stop the code right about here. Basically, I want to keep everything until the point where we get the four coordinates around the query. And as you may remember, we get them in the DSD variable. To determine where the middle is, aka the centroid, we just need to add all the x coordinates and all the y coordinates together, and then divide each one by 4. So let's figure out the four coordinates of the square.
After some playing around, I figured out that the coordinate sets are gotten by accessing the list like this. Remember that now every chords variable contains a list with two values, the x and the y coordinate. We can also unpack them separately by, access, by setting an x and y variable for each. Finally, we just add all the x coordinates and y coordinates, then we divide them by 4. We can manually check if they are right. Let's print them out and see. So yeah, those coordinates fit right on the spot. One problem we might encounter if we want the bot to move our mouse is that Pi Auto GUI takes in integers, not floats. So let's round up the results. Great. Let's see what happens if I move the mouse now. Let's call pi out of GUI dot move to. And let's add some wait time to give me some time to set up. Okay, let's run it. As you can see, my mouse moved but not exactly where we want it. That is because the coordinates are not considering the position of the image in relation to the screen because it puts the image in the 0, 0 position. To fix this, let's just change the name of ing2 to train underscore ing so it doesn't get modified or anything. Let's take a screenshot by running pyaragui.screenshot. The only parameter will be the name of the file that should be created. Let's do train underscore ing2.png and let's open it by setting ing2 equals cv.ingrid. And the parameters are the name of the image and let's remember to set the second one to zero, so it opens the image in grayscale. Let's run the code and get everything ready. Perfect, as you can see, it worked out. If we check our work folder, you can see that a new image was created and it's the screenshot we took with Pi Auto GUI. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something or at least enjoyed the video. If we ever reach 100 subs, we'll make our bots. If you have any game recommendations for the bots, let me know in the comments. I'll see you.